near Brainerd, Minnesota. It's the day before the $150,000 Brainerd JC's Ice Extravaganza, world's largest charity fishing tournament. And something special is happening today. Every single hole, and I'm talking 16,000 to 20,000 holes are being drilled with StrikeMaster Lithium 40 volts. That's an electric ice auger. Now it wasn't that long ago, a few years ago, you got all the naysayers. Electric augers are too heavy. If a five footer can do it, you can. <laughs> they can't cut enough holes. They don't have the power. They just can't handle it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward to 2022. We're using all electric augers to drill 16,000 to 20,000 holes. Strike Master shipped up 60 lithium 40 volts and 180 extra batteries, and they are going to town. And now stop, you hear that? You don't hear anything. Do you know how weird it is that there's up to 20,000 holes being drilled today and I can't hear anything, any noise, any commotion? We didn't even know if we were in the right spot until we started looking around and seeing holes being punched. I can tell you from being here on normal years, you can't even hear yourself think when there's that many gas augers poking holes. No spilled gas. They start on the first pull every time. It's just a wild experience and, and honestly, it's just a huge milestone in ice fishing and so, in honor of the ice extravaganza, I would say every year, probably half of the prize winning fish caught are tulabies. So today, after we finish help drilling a few holes, we're gonna go on a little tulabie mission of our own. Let's get after it. trying. Thule time. Little known fact, there isn't a single letter P in the word Tula Bees. Tula Bees. Like I said, Tula Bees win thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of prizes in the ice extravaganza. So what the heck? Let's go uh, catch a few of them. And I, there's just not very many videos out there about how to catch them, how to target them, what to use. And it's super simple. They'll bite all day and they'll chase up and down like a lake trout. It's actually really cool. Super unique bite. We'll see if they cooperate. It would have been way too easy if we found them in the first spot we went to. And that is definitely not the reality of ice fishing for anything, so. I guess it's only fair we have to go to another spot. <laughs> to the next deep hole. Good sir. Spot number three. A small little 40 foot hole in the middle of a bunch of sunken humps. We're finally seeing a few. So there's not a ton, but there's a half dozen of them between 60 to 90 feet that way. Kind of right on the edge of the drop off. I forgot that I still have my helmet on. And it's a really cool helmet. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Do you need my assistance? Do you need me out there? Let's catch these. There's not a lot, but there's a half dozen. And uh, there could be more work in this hole. 
so out of breath and out of shape. There's three fish just 20 feet off to the side. So I'm gonna just jig really aggressively, try to get them to come look. One of them is moving from 20, 25 feet out to the side. Now one of them is making its way towards us. It's crazy how far in this clear water they can see those dropper eggs. Now he's, he's within five feet of me now. All right, now it's game of cat and mouse time. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> so cool that he came from 25 feet away. So not cool that I missed him. Got him. There we go, fish on. That was cool. I got him from, it's 53 feet deep. I got him all the way up to 25 feet before he ate. Just chasing and darting. Just a littler bugger. But man, is that fun when they just get all hot to trot and chasey like that. Look at that super bright red tungsten volfly. Looks so tasty. Yes. That was a blast, man. There is no fish that engages more on sonar. Chasing up and down and just, you can do the wildest jigging motions. And they're slippery buggers. But you know what? They're so ugly, they're pretty. Look at that shimmer. And they actually get quite a bit bigger than that. That still fights like the biggest crappie you'll ever catch. Which is why I like using these beefy ultralights. What the heck are you talking about beefy ultralight? <laughs> so yeah, it's an ultralight, but look at this backbone. It's an ultralight that I literally will use as like a dead stick for walleyes. It's a true ultralight from like here but it's just got loads of backbone. So it's really fun to f catch, you know, fish that are not 10 pound walleyes and not 10 pound vervidon. But it's so universal. I use it for bluegills, crappies, tulabies, whatever. It's the, uh, is it a 42 or 44 inch? 44 inch ultralight evolution series. Just the funnest rod that I own, hands down. So that's what I mean by a beefy ultralight. Ultralight with some backbone, but I mean, realistically, you can use light walleye setups for these things. Uh, my other 2B, I think it's a 34 inch medium, but it's pretty soft for a walleye rod. And it's perfect for tulabies. And you're using small baits, but you've got those big giant flasher spoons up above. So you're actually fishing a pretty heavy presentation, but I still like having a lighter rod just cause they're they're not giant fish, you know? A big one is two pounds is like a giant one. But they're 12 to 16, 17 inches. Okay, okay, before I keep fishing, and before, definitely before I keep catching, I need to get a camera set up on that live scope so that you can watch these fish interacting with the bait. We rolling. Is that? We're trying to film There's one. <laughs> I finally have one within a couple feet of me now. Get on out of here. You know what? I think maybe I should try bigger gaudier. Something a little brighter, a little bigger profile just to get fish to come in from farther away and get more curious. I've got the ultimate finesse profile on right now, which is I feel so confident when they're actually on it and I'm working them, but just to get more fish in. One with that biggest size rocker spoon. Gonna load it up. Usually first drop of the day with a rod when I'm using mono, I will try to pull out 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet of line, however much I'm actually fishing with. And it just, it almost pulls that memory out and see how like this is not the newest line, it's new enough, but it's laying straight now and it just kind of pulls those coils out of there and gets it laying straight and flat. And it's just a way to prolong the life of the model that you're using. 
make it a little bit more fishable that day and get those coils and those wines out of it. But mono's cheap, it's a few bucks for a whole spool, so usually every couple of outings I'll just pull off, you know, 60 feet, 80 feet of line, do a double uni knot and reel some new fresh line on top of it. You don't need to do a whole new spool. The thing's moving slow though. Maybe I should try to make him in a better mood. Oh, I changed his mood real fast when I dropped. Oh, he turned it down, but he's chasing. He mad, he mad at the world. Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> there we go. That fish came in so slow and lethargic. And then I opened my spool and I dropped all the way to bottom. And that fish went from zero to a hundred. Just got super darty and mean and nasty. Target species acquired, baby. So funny how that fish came in like it was a walleye in the middle of January or February, just hating its life. And when I opened that spool and he started chasing, we got like that lake trout action. Chase down, chase up, super hot to trot. That is so fun, man. I'm so jacked up over a 15 inch fish, 16 inch fish, whatever it is. And you know what? That was right after I switched to a bigger, gaudier profile. I'm gonna dunk it, it's covered in junk. I'm telling you that rocker spoon, VMC rocker spoon, is like the best out of the package bait. It's just, you don't have to do anything different. It is what it is. Big profile to call them in. Dropper chain. It's got that little glow resin single hook. I use the glow resin epoxy uh, treble hooks on dead sticks a lot. A little drop for a little color, a little glow. Some euros. But just, this was the biggest size. And we're in almost 60 feet of water, 54, 55. So heavier is fine by me. Bigger profile for them to come in from a distance. And you know what? There's actually another one on the graph about 20 feet to the side. So I better drop down there and start ripping that and just trying to get them to move in, come in from a distance. Like I said before, it's been negative 20 to negative 30 real feel, whatever, every day. Just cold and nasty. Two of these are still fish. Even though they're normally a little bit more cooperative than other species, they're still fish. They still don't like giant cold fronts. So uh, this is like the first decent 15 degree day, maybe even 20 by the time we're, you know, midday here. Where fish are, uh, I don't even know if they're even active yet. They're still not happy, but it's doable to be outside today, which is nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, catch up to him. Oh. oh, that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. What happened? Well, nobody really knows. I set the hook when I was about over my head. Even a 44 inch rod couldn't save me with how high up I was on there. Oh, there's no way he eats again, really? I had him for like 10 feet. Unless that's a different fish, but I think it's the same fish. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's all over it. That was such a gross hook set. He's going for the spoon. Oh, he bit the spoon. I could see him on live scope on the spoon instead of the little bait underneath. Mm. 
the one thing I will say about fishing for tulipies is you really need to work that entire water column. It just depends on the day if they're coming in, you know, four to six feet off bottom. Sometimes they're 10, 20 feet off bottom. Sometimes they're just 10 feet under the ice. It reminds me so much of like a little mini lake trout where even if you're not graphing fish, you need to reel all the way up. So you're like 20 feet down, jig, rip, open your spool, let it free fall, crash back down. And it's so funny how sometimes you can just be doing that messing around, flying up, flying down, and then a fish will show up in your cone angle out of nowhere. So you really need to work that water column from top to bottom, unless you dial in exactly the depth that they're constantly coming in at a spot, then I'll focus in on that. But otherwise, switch it up, play around, rip, get crazy with it, and then slow down once there's a fish on your graph and you're trying to get them commit to commit and just do little one foot pops and then get him chasing up and down. He's actually engaging. Shoot him, Jacob. Whoa, look how darty he is. Does that GoPro on a loop? On the live scope, I'm an idiot. Hold on. No! I was reclipping it. I can't believe I actually still got an eye shot. <laughs> out so you said the hook into my armpit and got him. The one time I reach out for the GoPro. Look at me going lefty. Yeah, with your mittens. There you go. Camera man. See ya. Hey, yeah, nice job. Give me my rod back. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't graphed a fish in a little while. It's time to make another move. Stay on active fish. So perfect timing for me to show you some example locations of what I look for in tulipy spots. So right now we're set up on these steep breaks. There's structure coming out with deep water access very close, whether it's 60 feet, 80 feet, 90 feet. I really want that deep water budding up to structure. And for us, 50 feet has kind of been the magic depth. Sometimes we catch them in 30, 40, sometimes 60, but as like a typical starting point, we ride that 50 foot contour on the Lake Master and adjust from there in or out. So right now we're set up on just kind of like a little finger that comes off of a, a, a little underwater point. And there's a 40 to 50 foot finger that pokes out and butts up to that like 68 to 72 foot hole. And these fish are working that 50 to 55 foot contour along that deep water break. But another one of my favorite spots that I actually found on accident while trying to catch crappies are deep holes, depressions, basins, like stuff in that 40 to 50, 60 foot range that looks like a spot where you would find midwinter crappies. So like where we're gonna bounce to next, it's a 40, 50 foot hole surrounded by a bunch of little shallower 20, 30 foot humps. But those little 40 foot pockets, little holes, I can't tell you how many times I've been out chasing crappies, graph fish, drop down, I'm like deep basin crappies, this is perfect, everything's working out. I set the hook, I fight the fish all the way up to the surface thinking I've got a 14 inch crappie and it's a tulipie. And then all of a sudden it was like, boom, light switch. These are good tulipie spots. These deep little pockets with weeds and shallow humps surrounding them hold a lot of fish to just work it. So I'm either fishing those deep pockets or I'm fishing those deep edges of structure that break off into the basin of the main lake. So we're gonna go hop up to this next hole and uh, see if we can find a few more active fish. All right, so we're in a fresh spot. I'm gonna start with my biggest, gaudiest profile. And that's actually a 716 sounds VMC rocker spoon. Now they come in three sizes, 316s, 516s, 716s. And when I'm starting on a fresh spot and I'm trying to get fish in from a distance and I'm in deeper water like I am right now in 50, 51.8 feet 
uh, I don't mind going to that biggest size. And it's just a broader, bigger profile that fish can see from farther away. Now, no matter what size rock or spoon you use, they all have the same number six epoxy, little glow resin epoxy octopus hook on them. So the same tiny little offering on the business end, and it's just a matter of how heavy of a weight and how big of a profile you want for that attractor. And uh, like I said, I like starting bigger, beefier, gaudier to pull fish in from a distance. If they're 20, 30, 40 feet away, we've seen today fish on live scope that were upwards of 50 feet away. And when you start dropping down, they come flying in to take a closer look. Now, ideally, I would like to have smaller when I'm trying to seal the deal on a fussy bite coming off of a, you know, a post cold front bite. But start bigger, work your way down from there. And the cool thing with tulabees is it's really one of those bites, one of those presentations where you can really play and have arts and crafts nights, right? One of my favorite things about fishing for walleyes in the summer is tying my own spinners, tying up my own rigs. You know, that's just like a side of the whole process that is so fun. And you're sitting around with buddies playing cribbage, hanging out, tying rigs up. Tulabees for me is like that. I like getting really custom with it. And like I said, the rocker spoon is the best, in my opinion, out of the package option that there is. But there's so many different things that you can do with these hand tied dropper rigs. So like this one is a 316 ounce rocker spoon. This is my, I have fish in my cone angle. They're looking at me and I want them to bite and I know that they're going to bite this. Smaller profile, I like those chromes in that clear water. And I went down to a little VMC tungsten bullfly, basically a little hair jig, small little subtle profile that they come into that spoon and they eat the little offering below. But you can get as squirrely as you want to. I've got some stuff tied up today that is like quarter ounce rattle spoons with a 12 inch dropper and I'll play around with a tungsten tubby on the bottom, a tiny little bullfly or hair jig with a maggot. It's so fun to play around with those different presentations and offerings. And it's like anything, you're fishing crankbaits in the summertime, you never both have the same crankbait out. Same thing for tulabees for me, or any species for that matter. Everybody should be using something different. Somebody should have that like chromey, natural, minnow profile color on. Other people should have that bright UV, call them in from a distance. And as soon as anybody catches two or three fish to one or none, you switch <laughs> and you figure out if it's a color thing, if it's a size thing. But I love playing and customizing and tweaking my gear. And tulabees is just one of those species that the options are endless for playing and tweaking and making your own rig. And there's just always something so rewarding about you know, coming up with your own concoction and you catch a couple fish on your body and they're like, what are you using? I don't know, <laughs> you know, a little custom done up quarter ounce rattle spoon, 12 inch, six pound fluorocarbon dropper with a bullfly on the bottom. I don't know, there's just something fascinating about it and rewarding when you get to set the hook on something that you tied up yourself. Later that same evening. There's a little one on me, but it's tiny. Look how big this spoon is. My rod is like... And then there's a big one that's actually off to the side. This one is so small. Hooked up! It's so, so this is like the one that they would use for tip-ups on Lake of the Woods. <laughs> this might be the smallest tulip I've ever caught in my life. Oh yeah. That's like, if you were on Lake of the Woods and caught this, you'd be soaking her under a tip-up to try to catch a 44 inch northern. Imagine that on a tip up. <laughs> All right. Of course there was a giant one down there and then this tiny little one. Which one do you think bit? Oh, hey. You're going the wrong way. There. The sun is setting. Our window to catch these tulabees is closing slowly. Uh, I'm not a tulabee expert. I like to poke around and dabble a little bit because it's just I like to mix it up. When walleyes are being walleyes, it's fun to go target other species. And 
I've always done better middle of the day, the morning, late morning bites really good. And like anything, you get a flurry at sunset, but I don't know, they kind of disappear for me once you get towards dark. And I mean, I can only assume that that's because giant walleyes and giant northerns and giant burbot like to eat tulabies. And so I don't know where they go, but they go and they get. So if that's the last fish of the day, it's been a blast. Just switching it up, doing something different. We're in the dog days of winter, midwinter, where uh, walleyes are tough. Everything is tough right now. It's been cold and just difficult. So switching it up, chasing the hot bite, trying something new. Thanks so much for watching. Go on your own local lake. Clear, deep, clean water lakes all across central and northern Minnesota. I've got tulabies. Use DNR Lake Finder to check the trap and net data. And uh, it's just kind of a fun way to switch it up and get extra hook sets in. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even sound close.